It is pretty unanimous. Claude 3.7 Sonnet is the best AI coding model that's been developed to date, with a noticeable improvement from Claude 3.5 Sonnet, the former king. In this video, we're going to use the AI coding editor Windsurf to build a full stack application using Claude 3.7 Sonnet. And we're going to take advantage of the thinking option in Claude 3.7 to build it in a multi phased approach. Starting with a user interface, then moving on to adding authentication. We're going to use Clerk for that. And then storing all that data in a cloud database in Supabase. I like to start the foundation of a new project outside of Windsurf or Cursor, and I'll explain why as I go. But let's start in the folder that I want to create the new project in, and then launch a terminal. And then I'll paste in this big command, and I'll explain all the pieces as we go here. So the first thing I'm using bun, which is an alternative to Node Package Manager or NPM. Personal preference, both will work fine. I just like it because it's much faster. And then we're running create next app, which is basically a starter kit that gives you a simple ready to go Next.js app that's properly structured. And so I usually just take the defaults here. We definitely want Tailwind CSS. And the reason I like Next.js so much is because it has a lot of built-in features that make it easier to build. And lots of code examples and support, it's easy to deploy. And you have to remember these huge models like Claude 3.7 is best when it's trained on a large volume of code. And it's pretty safe to assume that it was trained on tons of Next.js and React code. So next that command initiates shadcn, and it just asks you for the base color here. And let's be honest, even the latest models aren't gonna blow you away with user interface design. So that's why shadcn's simple off the shelf components are perfect for AI to build with. And I actually personally prefer that clean style of UI anyway. And then at the end, it does a bun dev, which actually starts the dev server to test with. And we see it's ready here on localhost 3000. And what I like to do is have a separate terminal, a separate Chrome browser, and a set, even a separate monitor so that I can update the code in Windsurf and then let it hot refresh and I can see what's going on right away. So now if I go to localhost, I see the create next.js app. This is what you should see if you did everything correctly. So now that I got that solid foundation built, let's go into Windsurf. Okay, so now that I got the application that create next app created for us, now we just open that folder inside Windsurf. And before we start coding, let's have a look at our global rules. In Cursor, they call this the Cursor rules. In Windsurf, it's just the global rules. Exactly the same thing. And one thing I've noticed, in my opinion, people try to do too much with these rules. They try to stuff them with all kinds of things like create readable code, things that are actually implicit in the way that AI does the code anyway. It's not gonna make a difference, so it just clutters it up. I try to put things in here that from my experience, the AI will get wrong and kind of be annoying as it's building. For example, I put here to use the command chatcn at latest, because I've noticed often the AI will try to use this command, which is actually the older syntax, chatcn dash UI. And then it just gives you errors and it keeps going round and round. So if you just put this in here, it's gonna stop that and I'll just install components correctly. And also it tries to always run a test server for you if you don't put in a command like this. So I'm gonna say I'm running my test server separately and just inform me if we need a test server restart, like a hard restart. Otherwise, the hot refresh will take care of everything. And like I was saying before, I like to use bun in place of npm. So for now, that's it. Just keep it nice and simple. So I'm gonna open up a cascade window. And then for the model, I'm gonna select Claude 3.7 Sonnet and then the thinking, because this first prompt's gonna be pretty involved. So the first thing, I'm just giving a bit of context on how this project was created. So I'm saying I use create next app to create it as the base. I'm telling it I wanna use Shad CN and Tailwind CSS for the UI components. And then I want this to be a resume builder. And from here, I'm gonna do different phases for different functionality of this application. For phase one, it'll just be the landing page. Will there be tiles where the user can click on those and fill in information for general info, work experience, education, and skills? And when I'm building with AI, I always like to have it give me a test data checkbox. So I can actually fill in data while I'm testing the application. I don't have to type it in all the time because AI is really good at generating test data. So this has been a real time saver for me when I'm building. And then I'm gonna say I want the data stored in local storage for now but I want to build in such a way that's easily integrated with Supabase later. So I'm just foreshadowing what we're going to build later on just so it structures it in the correct way. And finally, I say I want to create a checklist with this phase one markdown file. And then I want you to check off all the steps as you go. So this is going to force it to think more at the start about all the steps it has to do to, to fulfill this prompt. But I find it's also really useful if it stops early. I can just tell it to look at that file again and keep going from where it left off. So let's run this. And I find in Claw 3.7, you can actually do a lot more work in one shot. Like you can go for you know five, 10 minutes and keep building without need to interrupt it or to redo things. I've been really impressed with that aspect of it. And we're seeing that here. So now it's built me this checklist for everything it's doing for this first prompt. So it ran for about five minutes, but then I noticed it started getting stuck on making this work experience form. 
So if we see the checklist here, it actually did a good job of checking off what it's done so far and also what it hasn't done. So this is actually very useful because I tried to say keep going and remember to update the markdown file with the checkboxes, but I kept getting this cascade error. And this is something I see sometimes in Windsurf that it is kind of frustrating. But now that we have this checklist, we can actually just start a new cascade window and just read that in there to pick up where to start next. So now I'm just open a new cascade and just add in the file phase1.md. I can say continue with the unfinished items on this checklist. And I'm gonna switch just to Claude 3.7 sonnet. And I'm gonna take away the thinking. I don't think we need that anymore for this. So basically what I'm doing here is just having it clear the context, read what's been done and do a little bit of a restart. Okay, sweet, so that worked. I'm restarting the cascade with a new window and now everything's been checked off. So let's take stock of what it built for us. And obviously this is a very simple UI, but actually I think that's good. So let's see if we can start adding some personal information. Okay, this looks pretty good. And like I said, my prompt, it added this use test data checkbox. So if I check that, it brings up a drop down box and actually gives me what kind of industry it is. Let's just say healthcare. And now all the data it's filling in is for a healthcare professional. So then work experience, it has all the key fields we have. I like it, it gives us this, this box, say if it's a current position, then it takes away the end date. And we can even add another position here. Remove them. And then use test data. One problem I see though is when you use test data on work experience, it doesn't remember what industry it was, so it just makes it a software developer. So we'll have to fix that. Education looks good, and so does skills. So we save all that. It does build a resume, but it's not putting in the work experience and education. I like how I did the skills here with these pills at the bottom. So now I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna fix some of these little issues before we go on to phase two. Okay, so I asked Claude 3.7 to fix those few things, and it's looking a bit better now. So I asked to move the industry up to the main page. Now I can select the industry that my career is in right from the main page. So let's just try finance, for example. Now if I edit work experience, I say use test data. Now it's gonna add test data from actual finance. Same for education. Now it's saying MBA versus like a computer science degree like it was before. So that's great. Now everything's working there. And now it actually fills in the total resume. So that actually looks pretty good. It's basic, but I like the look of it actually. And it even added this download PDF button, which I didn't really ask for. But so it gives me an issue here. And the nice thing about how we create this app with create next app is in the bottom left here, you can see this Next.js kind of console. If I just click on that, it's gonna nicely show me the error. I think it is copy, it's saying copy stack trace. Go back into Windsurf and just paste it in in its entirety. Which is gonna give me a really quick way to fix issues. And now that Windsurf fixed it, if we go download PDF, it actually works this time. And it makes us a basic PDF. So I'm happy with this for phase one. The UI is definitely gonna need some updates as we go, but it's simple, clean, does the job, and it's got all the functionality and capabilities we need to build on. And before I wrap up this phase, I have to do a couple more things. So I had this super cool logo. I changed the font on Resume Voodoo. I give this thing a more interesting vibe. I also added this button down at the bottom called Clear All Resume Data. So you click that, it gives you a warning, and then it wipes out all the data so you can start again. Just a quick way to start your testing all over again. And again, this is just temporary. I'm gonna move that in the final build. These are just some hints on how to speed up your development workflow. So now it's time to add authentication to the app. And for that, I'm gonna use Clark. I've had a lot of success with this in the past. It has a really generous free tier. So what we're gonna do is configure it so a user can log in with a Google account and then see the resume builder associated to their user. And before we go to Windsurf and run the next phase prompt, let's go to Clark, actually create an application. So on the top bar, we'll create a new application. And then the first thing to ask you is all the different providers you want to enable for authentication. So for this one, I'm just going to take off email. I'm just going to keep Google on. And then next, I'm going to take this quick start guide for Next.js and Clark and just copy that link so I can pass it to the AI so it knows exactly how to set this up. And the prompt's going to be add authentication to Resume Voodoo using Clark and a Clark application I have set up. And then I paste in the setup instructions because Windsurf can read URLs and read websites. So this will give it all the information it needs to get it set up. Then I'm gonna say when the user is not authenticated, show a static landing page with the features of Resume Voodoo. But when they log in, show the resume builder as it is now. And then save the resume information to be associated with the logged in user. Cause I wanna take all that data we have for the application and save it with the user who's actually logging in and do, entering the data. Finally, I'm gonna create the checklist again. So now it's gonna be called phase two dot markdown. And we wanna check it off as we go. Okay, so Cascade went through and completed all the tasks in this checklist here. But then when I ran it, I started getting errors from Clark. So I discovered the trick to actually get this working. When you first create the Clark application in the overview, it actually gives you all the steps to get it working. So instead of giving 
when surf a link to the steps. If you actually just copy all this, and this is gonna include your clerk secret key, which is masked here, but when we copy it, it actually become plain text. If you copy everything out to adding your clerk provider, copy all that in back into Windsurf. And then I say implement clerk like this, just paste that in there, and then I'll do it correctly. So now if I go back to localhost, now I see a totally different landing page. I'm missing my cool little logo though. Let's see if the sign-in works. So now we see the clerk sign-in page where we continue with Google, and that's because this is the only one we've selected out of the options. Okay, there we go, it locked us in. If you notice now in the top right, it has a drop down for my actual user that's logged in. Also, if we go back to Clerk, we can see that we have logins happening. So everything's being authenticated correctly. So I consider that a pretty big success. Let's go on to the next one. So the app's looking good, but all that data is still actually stored on their local browser and local storage. So what we wanna do next is add it to a database. And we're gonna use a cloud database in this case, Supabase. And before we add our first Supabase prompt, one thing I did change was I made it so the data just saved automatically. So if we make a change, the data just saves automatically. There's no more having to save anymore. That's gonna set us up better for real-time updates when we get into Supabase. I'm taking a bit of a different approach for Supabase. I'm gonna start really slow and just get the connection working first. Because my experiences in the past when you try to do too much in one prompt, it can mess up your whole application. So we're just gonna start with add a feature when a user logs into Resume Voodoo, it puts an entry in a Superbase database and records who logged in and the time. So this way it's not interfering with our application at all, it's just an added little feature. And so once you get this working, we'll know the connectivity is working between our Superbase account. And while that's going, I logged into Superbase with just a free account and created a new project, Resume Voodoo. And then down, if you scroll down to the project API, this is where you're gonna find your unique ID for your Superbase project, as well as your API key. So we'll need to copy those two and put them into our local environment variables to secure that connection. So that prompt updated the application to track logins, but it also gave me this readme.markdown file in my Superbase folder that tells me exactly how to set it up. So it's asking me to run a SQL script. So if I just copy that, and then in Superbase, go to your SQL editor, and then just paste in that script and run it. Now if you look in the table editor, you should see it listed. There we see user logins. Now back in Resume Voodoo, if I just log in again, I should see entries in here. Yeah, there it is. It also has this unique user ID, which I think comes from Clerk when you get authenticated. So that's gonna be useful later on when we add the rest of the data into this database. So that's a great start with Superbase. Now what I'm gonna do is create a new conversation and a new cascade chat. I'm going back to Cloud 3.7 Sonnet the thinking model again, because this is gonna be another bigger prompt. I'm gonna say the Superbase connection is working with tracking users' logins. Now I wanna store all user data from personal info, work experience, education, and skills to be stored in Superbase, not local storage. So update the code and give me SQL to initialize the new database tables. Also, I want the data updates to happen in real time. And then this is gonna be a big change. So we wanna create a checklist for phase three dot markdown and check it off as we go. And the reason I started a new cascade window for this one is at any point it doesn't go well, you can go to this button here at the very top of your cascade chat and it says revert to this step. And that brings all the code back to that point where it's, everything's working. So that's why when I start a new major phase, I always like to start a new cascade chat. I did nudge it along a few times, but eventually did get the whole checklist done. And I really like the steps actually laid out here. Start with defining the schema, what the data is gonna look like. And also updated real-time data, which I'll show you in a second. And then at the end, it gave us a SQL script. Another SQL script got to run on the Superbase to create a new table in that database. So I ran that and I created this profiles table. And you see this side to store some of the information like the personal info, the work experience, education, et cetera, and JSON objects. It also stores the clerk ID. So it really gets the authenticated user's unique ID. So that looks pretty good, but the big test will be if it does actually work. So let's update the industry from technology to healthcare and see if it actually makes an entry in the database. Oh, and there it is. So everything's empty except industry with healthcare. Perfect. <laughs> Let's see if everything else works. And then if you go through the different sections, yeah, it looks like everything works and I generated the preview. And now in Superbase, all those JSON objects are filled out correctly. One thing I did turn on though is there's a toggle here for real time. So remember I asked AI to actually implement this in a real time way. So you have to have this on on the database for that to work correctly. So there we go, we have a full stack Next.js application, all built by Cloud 3.7 Sonnet. But I have a lot more ideas for this project. I want a user to be able to import an existing resume and have it fill in all those sections for them maybe enhance some bit with AI. I also wanna add the feature where you can put in a link to a job and then it would tailor a resume for that job. Maybe even make a cover letter too. So if you wanna follow along with all that, make sure you subscribe to the channel. I hope you're having an amazing day. I'll talk to you in the next one.